How do you go from being the number one ranked tennis legend in the world, making over $170 million from tennis alone, to ending up behind bars without a dime to your name? This is the story of Boris Becker, the ex number one tennis goat that took a wild ride from dominating the tennis courts to fighting for his life in courtrooms. Boom Boom Boris German tennis legend Boris Becker was a physical specimen like no other. To put that into perspective, 22 Grand Slam winner Rafael Nadal is about 6 foot 1, while current number one tennis player Novak Djokovic is about 6 feet and 2 inches tall. However, Becker was in a league of his own. The German tennis goat was a gigantic 180 pound 6 foot 3 beast. Talk about a human skyscraper! Despite towering over these two guys, Becker had far more going for him than height alone. In fact, the German possessed everything that most tennis players could only dream of. A sleek haircut, a jaw-dropping bank account, and a killer 140 miles per hour backhand serve that was so hard, it had his opponents shaking in their shoes. And mind you, this was all back in the 80s, meaning Becker was giving his opponents a terrible time with nothing but a wooden racket that lacks all of the modern technology tennis players have at their disposal today. That's basically like winning a marathon in steel-toed boots. Becker's ability to leave his opponents clueless with his powerful serve earned him the nickname Boom Boom Boris. And no kidding, because Boris would literally set his poor perfect name for a player who set his poor opponents on fire. Watching Boris Becker play was like watching the ocean in motion. The man was so graceful, and yet so powerful. And when it came to his composure, speed, precision, charisma, and strength, nobody came close. These were the qualities that the German put on display even at a very young age. Back in 1985, Becker was only 17 years of age when he became the youngest male tennis player ever to win Wimbledon, a record that stands to this very day. Becker was just 17 at the time. He literally ruled the court and cemented his name permanently in the tennis world. But if you still don't get how much of a big deal the German was, think about how good one man can be on the court to not only have an entire species named after him, but to also have his tennis racket gifted to the freaking Pope as a monumental heritage. Now that's what we call iconic. Throughout Boris's career, the German won six Grand Slams, 49 singles, and 15 double titles. With such an impressive career portfolio, it's no wonder why the likes of Djokovic adore the German. But Becker didn't just have a career that a lot of tennis players could only dream of, his lifestyle was also one of the most luxurious you'd ever find. Numerous million dollar mansions, a fleet of some of the most flamboyant cars, and a bank account with more money than he could spend. Becker didn't only spend money on himself, he also had a heart of gold. The German was also a philanthropist, and he donated lots of his tennis earnings to charity. And one of the reasons he could freely do this was because of the German's fame and brand. You see, when you can produce powerful serves like Becker and win multiple Grand Slams, it's only a matter of time before luxurious brands start running to you with endorsement deals worth millions of dollars. With that kind of money, Becker was able to make smart investments in real estate, organic food production, and even crude oil. Now that's what they call using money to make even more money. Becker's life was like a dream. Everything was perfect. His career, women, endorsements, and more money than he'd ever dreamed of. And that brings us to a very important question. How the heck did Becker squander his $170 million fortune? Well, it turns out that behind the scenes, Becker had a secret life that nobody knew of. A life that cost him everything he had ever worked for and took him from being a terror on the court to fighting for his life in the courtroom. And it all started even before Becker got his big break after becoming the youngest player in tennis history to win Wimbledon. You see, the problem had started even before his career had. Growing up, Becker used to be that kind of kid that no one believed in. His coaches, friends, and even his family. So the German promised himself to prove every single one of them wrong. And what better way to make them regret not believing in him than winning the biggest tennis tournament in history? 
So, in order to prove everyone wrong, Beckett made the bold decision to take a two-year leave of absence from the school principal in order to participate in Wimbledon in 1985. And so, in 1985, the 17-year-old German did the impossible by becoming the youngest player to ever win the tournament. Becker's friends, classmates, and family were all shocked. And soon enough, everyone that didn't give a nickel about him suddenly wanted to be his friend. Now that's how you make your haters pay. But Becker was far from done. After winning Wimbledon, the German went on to win six Grand Slams, including the 1991 Australian Open, the 1987 French Open, a Davis Cup for his country, and achieved a number one world ranking all in less than five years. However, fate took a twist on the 25th of June, 1999. Becker lost Wimbledon to Pat Rafter and called it quits after that. Now, you're probably thinking, retirement shouldn't be such a big deal. After all, Becker had accumulated a $170 million fortune in both tennis and endorsements. Well, you're right. The only problem was, that very day, Becker made a costly mistake that changed his life forever. You see, back in 1993, Becker married German model and actress Barbara Fellis. And at first, their relationship didn't sit well with many due to Barbara's mixed race. But eventually, their marriage got accepted as one of those impossible love stories after the couple had two kids. Things were finally perfect again for the German. Or at least it seemed perfect until Barbara got a call. A call that sent their marriage crashing down a hill. It turns out that Becker decided to play hide the sausage with a Russian waitress named Angela Ermakova in a broom closet the very day he played his last game at Wimbledon. One thing led to another, and the waitress got pregnant. Becker was unaware of this, as it wasn't until the year 2000 that this lady called Becker to tell him about the child. And as fate would have it, Becker wasn't home the day that she called. And that meant the person that answered the call was none other than his wife, Barbara Fellis. Barbara was pissed, and the whole thing quickly became messy. Becker tried to explain and apologize, but Barbara refused to listen. She was hurt and embarrassed, and there was no forgiveness in the cards for her. Becker had not only cheated on her, but he'd also gotten another woman pregnant, and that for her was non-negotiable. It's almost ridiculous how just one phone call can ruin your entire life. And for Becker, that five-minute phone call to his wife would not only be the most expensive five minutes of his life, but it would also mark the start of his financial misfortune. Barbara filed for a divorce that resulted in the model getting a $14.4 million compensation, their mansion in Florida, and custody of their two children. Angela, on the other hand, ended up with a $2 million settlement after numerous backs and forth with Becker's lawyer, initially insisting that the kid wasn't his until he finally threw in the towel. But this was just the tip of the iceberg, as the following events will not only tear Becker's life into pieces, it will also land him in jail with nothing but memories of his glory days. In addition to losing his model wife, Becker was forced to pay child support for all three of his children. Now, losing his family was a terrible time for Becker, but it feels like the whole issue took a massive psychological toll on the tennis legend, because Boris didn't seem to make any good decisions after that, and as such, all of his business began going down the drain faster than a clogged toilet. It was as if the universe had decided to tear him down. First, he lost a whopping 1.5 million euros investment in a sports website that went bankrupt. Then, just a few months after setting up his personal internet television channel, it crashed and burned, taking millions of dollars with it. And if that wasn't enough, Boris also lost over $10 million after investing in the Nigerian oil and gas sector. Now, you'd think that after experiencing so many financial setbacks in such a short amount of time, Boris would learn his lesson and be more careful with his money. But no, he decided to do the opposite and get even more reckless. According to Christian Schumers, one of the writers of Boris's Life is Not a Game biography, Boris still spends like he's a tennis superstar making bank. In his words, he still lives at the same standard he enjoyed as an active tennis professional when the millions were flowing, from expensive rents or holidays through to expensive meals, cigars, whiskey, 
On top of that, he is extremely generous. Now, we can't blame Boris for being generous. It's a nice trait to have. But if only he knew what kind of disasters were waiting for him around the corner. Maybe he would have been a bit more frugal. Now, if you know just about anything about athletes that have lost everything they had, you'd know that the biggest cause of their downfall is taxes. Well, apart from a messy divorce and child support, of course. Now, we're not sure if it was ignorance or just pure greed. But unfortunately, Becker fell into a tax pit. And before he knew what was happening, it was too late to dig himself out of it without serious damages. The former tennis pro got into his first tax scandal in 2002. You see, the German law requires its top earners to pay 45% of all personal income back to the country as taxes. But Becker decided to play smart and take up residency in Monaco. Now, you're probably asking, what's wrong with that? Well, the problem is, Monaco is what you'd call a tax-free haven. And to enjoy the benefits of this tax-free haven, you have to actually live there, physically. And after some digging around, the German authorities found out that Becker was actually living it up in Munich, Germany. And what did that mean for Becker? Well, it meant that he'd been evading taxes to the tune of $4.7 million. And as you might expect, he denied all the allegations, even putting his wedding as collateral. But unfortunately for him, the jury wasn't buying it. And on October 24th, 2002, Becker was sentenced to two years behind bars. But luckily for him, his sentence was suspended, so he didn't have to trade in his expensive designer clothes for a prison jumpsuit. Instead, he got slapped with a 500,000 euro fine. Let's just say that he probably wasn't sweating it too much. Lesson learned, right? Well, maybe not. Because it turned out that Becker also had an insane gambling addiction. He competed in the European Poker Tour and the World Poker Tour. And by 2013, he had earned more than $90,000 in poker winnings. Becker was a celebrity team member for the online poker platform PokerStars from November 2007 to mid-May 2013. He reached the World Poker Tour main event at the Bellagio in Las Vegas that same year, finishing in 40th place and earning over $40,000. In 2011, he finished 97th on the European Poker Tour in Barcelona, only winning $8,000. Becker went on to compete in many poker events for the next several years. He'd won a few thousand dollars here and there, but never earned anything close to his tennis earnings. To top it all off, his poker earnings didn't really count because he also lost a lot of money gambling. It was almost like for every time he took two steps forward, he took another three steps back. And it wasn't until 2017 that the German began to realize just how terribly wrong things had gone for him. That year, a British court declared him bankrupt over an unpaid loan of nearly $5 million on his estate in Mallorca, Spain, and an unpaid personal loan worth $1.6 million that carried an astounding 25% interest rate. But instead of owing up to his mistakes, Becker's lawyers argued that he had diplomatic immunity in the bankruptcy case due to his appointment as the Central African Republic's attaché for sports in the European Union a role that turned out to be a farce. In the end, Becker had to sell all of his tournament trophies, move out of his $7 million London mansion to pay off his debt, and move in with a friend who let the tennis legend stay with him whenever the former tennis pro found himself in London. In April 2022, Becker's bank account got hit with the final blow after a London jury convicted him of four separate crimes while acquitting him of 20 other charges related to his 2017 bankruptcy, which included hiding an additional 825,000 euro bank loan shares in a tech firm to avoid paying his debts and failing to declare a property. In the end, he faced a seven-year prison sentence but was only sentenced to serve two years and six months. And with that, the once famous and filthy rich number one lost everything he had. Now, we're not saying this is a cautionary tale about the dangers of success or anything like that, but let's just say that Boris's story is a reminder that even the biggest names in sports can fall from grace. So the next time you're feeling invincible, maybe take a page out of Boris's book and remember, Nothing lasts forever.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to learn more interesting things about your favorite tennis players.